with its gigantic expanses, its immense time spans, and its innumerable entities, it is difficult to conceive of the cosmos as an overall construct. While the true dimensions of the universe sometimes seem abstract and difficult to grasp, the question of the origin of the universe is no less challenging. How is it actually possible that our galactic home formed practically out of nothing? What do we know about the background of the Big Bang? And what set in motion the course of cosmic events that continues unabated to this day? Together with you, we are looking for answers to these exciting questions. Want to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and activate the bell to never miss one of our posts in the future. With a thumbs up, you motivate us and show that we can engage you with the content of our videos. The Roots of the Universe the oft-used folk saying goes, nothing comes from nothing. While in everyday life, this saying sometimes refers to one's own work ethic, that quote also describes an apparent paradox from the world of astronomy. How can it be that something, in this case the universe, came from nothing? Commonly, our understanding says that something can exist only if it has formed from an already existing material or another component. Transferred to the cosmos, therefore, the central question arises, where did the material come from that produced the Big Bang? And in which way was this origin component of the universe formed? To understand how some experts approach this complex question, we must first turn the wheel of time forward by many billions of years. A theory says that one day the last star in the universe will burn up, whereupon the cosmos will change to a lightless void. The extinction of the last star represents accordingly the prelude to an infinitely long, dark epoch, within which all matter will be consumed by gigantic black holes. The corresponding gravity monsters will also evaporate thereupon. At the same time, space will continue to expand before activity in the cosmos comes to a complete halt. Or will it? In fact, some researchers are convinced that just such an empty, dark, and cold universe, which will come into being in the distant future, was the cornerstone of our Big Bang. How did matter come into being? Before we go into more detail about this exciting theory, we should first consider how physical matter came into being in the first place. If we want to explain the roots of stable matter from molecules or atoms, the complication arises that such matter did not exist either during the Big Bang or in the millennia that followed. It is true that experts today can understand how the first atoms emerged from simpler particles once the appropriate conditions were in place to keep complex matter stable. Scientists can also answer the question of of how these atoms later fused into stars to form heavier elements. However, the corresponding models cannot explain how something can come into being out of nothing. Therefore, it's advisable to think back on the wheel of time even further. Protons and neutrons, which together form the nucleus of an atom, represented the first long-lived particles of matter in the cosmos. They were formed about one ten-thousandth of a second after the Big Bang. Thus, no matter in the true sense of the definition existed before. Fortunately, physics allows us to trace that time span back even further to those processes that took place before the formation of stable matter. That era is called the Great Unified Epoch in the expert world. However, it should be mentioned at this point that we are entering the world of speculative physics. Within their experiments, scientists simply cannot generate enough energy to authentically recreate the processes of that time. One widespread thesis in this respect is based on the fact that the physical world at that time consisted of a mixture of short-lived elementary particles. This also included quarks, or in other words, the basic building blocks of protons and neutrons. The relation of matter and antimatter might have been in a meticulous equilibrium. This means that every kind of matter particle had a mirror-like antimatter counterpart, which differed from its counterpart in only one aspect. However, antimatter and matter annihilate each other as soon as they meet. The physical particle world was subject, therefore, to a rhythm from constant destruction and new formation. However, also this constellation cannot explain to us still how these particles originated. The quantum field theory states that even a vacuum, which by definition corresponds to an empty space, is bursting with physical activity 
activity. In detail, this activity is said to take place there in the form of energy fluctuations. These fluctuating continuous changes of states could thus cause particles to appear, only to disappear again afterwards. In fact, experts have already succeeded in discovering such particles in experiments. Even in the vacuum of space-time, there are particles that appear to be formed out of nothing, only to disappear again. The Origin of Space-Time We dedicate ourselves now to the question, how did space-time itself originate? To get to the bottom of this cosmic mystery, we must go to the so-called Planck era. This era describes the first phase in the development of the universe after the Big Bang. According to the unanimous opinion of experts, only one fundamental force existed at that time, which is appropriately called the primordial force. Applied to practice, this meant gravity, electromagnetic, weak, as well as strong interaction, were indistinguishable from each other at that time. The problem? Our current theories are not able to decipher the physics of the Planck era in a comprehensible way. To fully understand the Planck era, we would need a theory of quantum gravity that combines quantum mechanics with general relativity. Although there are no perfect models in this respect, there are promising approaches, such as string theory or loop quantum gravity. Within these models, space and time are considered emergent. The term emergence generally describes the possibility of the formation of new properties or structures of a system as a result of the interaction of its elements. What we perceive as space and time in our reality is in fact a result of complex quantum processes that take place on a level that is not tangible for us. Since our conventional understanding reaches its limits within the Planck era, we cannot rely on our common understanding of cause and effect there. In spite of this, all plausible theses of quantum gravity describe something physical which happened in the then primordial epoch of the universe, a kind of precursor of ordinary space and time. But also here the question arises, where did this physical something come from? The sobering answer is, we simply do not know at present. What is certain, however, is this. So far, no confirmed cases could be proven in the world of physics in which something came into being out of nothing. Nothingness as origin? To conclude today's post, let's take a closer look at the exciting theory we touched on at the beginning of our video. Physicist Roger Penrose put forward an exciting, albeit controversial, model that depicts a cyclical universe. For example, the expert recognized that there are striking mathematical similarities between an extremely hot, dense, small state of the universe, as commonly postulated in the context of the Big Bang, and an extremely cold, empty, expanding state of the cosmos which scientists theorize will occur in the distant future. These recognized similarities in turn led Penrose to a unique conclusion. If the described states are brought to their limits, they are identical from a mathematical point of view. Thus, the paradox that emerges is, the complete absence of matter could have produced all the matter we find in the universe today in the first place. Seen from this point of view, our present universe therefore originated from a state which comes as close as possible to the often quoted nothing, namely from that which remains if the whole matter of the cosmos was destroyed by black holes which have decayed in turn into photons. But how can it be explained that a cold, empty universe is equal to a hot, dense universe? To understand this, we have to make a detour to a complex mathematical procedure, the so-called conformal scaling. In simple terms, this is a geometric transformation that changes the size of an object but leaves its shape intact. Penrose's models thus show how the two states of the universe can be related so that the shapes of their spacetimes match. Granted, the idea that two objects are identical, although they have different sizes, seems difficult to grasp. However, Penrose states in this respect that size does not play an overriding role under such extreme physical conditions. The same is valid for time. The cold and the hot, dense state of the universe are on different timelines. While the cold, empty state seems to the observer as if it would last eternally, the hot, dense state which came out of it inhabits its very own timeline. Even if Penrose's conjecture should one day be confirmed, there are still some profound questions to be answered. How was the cycle system described by the physicist formed? Where does physical reality itself come from? Why does anything exist at all? There is no doubt that such questions are highly complex and may never be answered, but that is precisely what makes dealing with them so exciting.
Now it's your turn. What do you think about today's contribution and the theory of the physicist Roger Penrose? We're already looking forward to your comments. Finally, feel free to take a look at our other exciting videos on our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.